welcome to fin Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is David Beck, a certified financial planner, and his practice focuses on helping families plan for financing college education. He has his own financial planning company, Bay Area Planners. David came to the United States from England in 1982 and worked in product management for electronic component manufacturers, including Tyco. He saw the youth culture at high-tech companies and he decided that uh, that wasn't the long-term career for him and so he decided to start a second career in financial planning. David graduated in 2006 from the financial planning program at UC Santa Cruz Extension and in November 2006 he was trying to help his niece uh, who was wrestling with financial issues for her college education. He learned that he didn't know as much as he wished about it and he decided to study in the area and make it an area of focus and it has developed into his full-time business. And David says that he's found helping people in this area to be very rewarding because he's helping young people get their college educations. So welcome, David, and thank you for being with me here today. Thank you, Michael. So today we're going to be talking about uh, families, uh, planning for uh, providing for the higher education uh, of their children. Uh, this is focusing a little more on higher income families uh, using tax benefits and loans. And I want to caution our viewers that this is just an introduction to the area and that help is available for further guidance. So in this case, we've got financial planners like uh, David that can help out. There's also CPAs, of course, are uh, available to help out uh, in getting information related to these tax benefits. Uh, before we started this also, uh, we talked about that there is an IRS publication. It's publication 970. You can get it at the IRS website which is www.irs.gov and uh, then there's a section there that says forms and publications and you look under publications and look up publication 970 or you can also search under education. I want to caution you that from what I've seen uh, that at least at this point in January of 2010 it has not been updated uh, for some of the more recent tax law changes. Hopefully something will be coming out soon. Um, so with that, I think uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our questions, David. So why do upper middle class families look to tax benefits uh, in uh, helping related to their uh, financing costs for college education? Yeah, higher income families uh, have probably looked at financial aid and realized that maybe they'll get some loans, uh, but that's as far as it goes. So now they're looking for other help. Um, everybody likes to use other people's money if they can, mm -hmm. so why not look at the IRS and instead of sending them a dollar, um, we'll take that dollar and spend it on college instead. So we're looking for, for um, help in the tax system. We basically want to pay less tax. Uh, the, the government wants to support us in this uh, by offering us some tax breaks, uh, but beyond that, you know, we can look at strategies generally thinking outside the box, as it were, to yeah. try and get our tax bill down. Okay. So what is the principal federal tax credit that helps with paying education costs? Um, it's changed uh, just within the last year. Uh, it used to be the HOPE credit, mm -hmm. uh, but since uh, President Obama came in, we have a new tax credit called the American Opportunity Credit. Uh, and it's a much improved credit, so it's, it's the main one. Previously, there were two. There was, as I said, the HOPE credit and the lifetime learning credit. For most people now, uh, they will just go immediately to the, the American Opportunity Credit. The only problem with the American Opportunity Credit is that it's only for 2009 and 2010. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, um, so uh, unless it gets extended, um, we might find ourselves back in that previous situation with the, with the HOPE credit. Yes. And the amount of the credit, is I, uh, one thing, I guess one of the features of it is that 40% of the credit is actually refundable. 
Right. There are, there are a number of good features about the American yeah. Opportunity Credit. Yeah. Number one, it's, it's for more money. Yeah. Um, so the HOPE Credit was uh, um, uh, just $1,900. This is $2,500. And, and even better than that is uh, the phase-out yeah. limit is raised. Um, so it's 160 to 180 thousand dollars, whereas the Hope Credit was 100 to 120. Yeah. So but a lot of families were seeing that they weren't even eligible for these credits because right. they were being phased out. Right. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, uh, a credit, a tax credit, is a dollar for dollar reduction in taxes. What happens if you don't pay any taxes? Uh, if you're a lower income family and you don't pay taxes. Uh, then that credit is normally lost. But this particular one, the American Opportunity Credit, a thousand dollars of it is um, is refundable. So in other in other words, even if you didn't pay taxes, you will get a thousand dollars. Yeah, receive a thousand dollars. So that's a help, especially for these lower income uh, families. And the other thing about this one uh, is that uh, it enables students to get help, although, like you said, it's only available for two years, but some may have, for example, used their two years up with their HOPE credit. Now they get the additional two years uh, right. that they'll be able to use this particular credit. Right, the HOPE credit was just for a freshman and sophomore year um, and wasn't for the junior and, and senior year, uh, but this, this American Opportunity Credit can be used by juniors and seniors as well. So if there are, there perhaps there are some lucky students who, uh, who got the HOPE credit for two years and now will get the American Opportunity Credit for two years. So. Did we want to make any other comments about the HOPE credit or do you think we've, we've said what we need to say related to that? Or? Um, we, yes, we don't, we don't re really know, whether, you know what will happen, as I say, at the, yeah. end, of, uh, at the end of the American Opportunity, Opportunity oh. Credit. So okay. probably the HOPE will come back. Okay. And then, and then because the HOPE only covers the first two years, uh, then you look to the lifetime learning credit right, so let's talk uh, about for, the, that for the last two years. Let's talk about lifetime learning credit. So actually, uh, the other thing about lifetime learning credit is it can actually go beyond the four-year education. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so it can be used by graduate students. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, it's a very different credit. It's... Uh, it's 20% of a, of a tuition bill, so uh, up to, up to $2,000, which yeah. means you need to spend $10,000 on tuition. Yes. Not everybody can do that, especially when that's, if you've got a $10,000 tuition bill, maybe you've got some grant money that applies to that. So, it's, so you take that off first, so that maybe mm -hmm. the $10,000 comes to $6,000, so it would be capped, the lifetime learning credit would be capped at 20% of the $6,000. $1,200. Yes. Okay. But the other thing that I think that we were talking about too is that the lifetime learning credit is on a family basis, mm -hmm. and where the other is like on a per student basis. That's right. So if you had two students at college and they were receiving HOPE credits, uh, each one would get you know whatever that credit amount is for, for the family based on the income. Um, however, for the lifetime learning, that $1,200 example I just gave uh, is is for the family, mm -hmm. uh, or the, the maximum, the two thousand yeah, dollars is for the family. family. Yeah. So, um, uh, I mean, if you've got two two students in college, then that doesn't go very far. Right. What's the above the line deduction for tuition and fees? Uh, 